Hi guys, Todd here again with Todd's World Home Show. Glad you're able to join me today as I share my top 10 RV rental share experiences and I want to give you some tips and tricks for your first time experience like we had on our first RV traveling experience over this last week and we've had a great time. I encourage all of you that have never had this experience to go out and try it yourself. It's something unique and different than the everyday traveling experience of just going from hotel to hotel, city to city, travel the uh, world, travel the United States, and get that experience traveling through state to state and creating memories that you'll never forget. It's an awesome time. So guys, stay tuned. I'll give you the tips and tricks I learned coming right up. Welcome guys. Now the first trip we took in an RV share rental was quite an experience and uh, we had a lot of fun. We did forget a few things that we should have done or packed beforehand, but that's why I'm here. That's why you're here watching this video with me today and we're going to go through it. What we did was we did a traveling trip from Florida where we live from around Tampa, Florida and we went up through up to uh, South Carolina then West Virginia in the mountains, that was very cool. And then we went over to Maryland, uh, a city that I grew up in, and we stopped and had some of my favorite food at some re favorite restaurants up there. And it was cool, there was a nice uh, campground up there we stayed in for a couple days. You all, all right guys, uh, we're here eating Toucan Taco, Sunken Meat Burritos, Hard Shell Taco Meat Tacos, Queso Dip, there's a sunken meat burrito there. Guys, sorry you're not here to join us, but we are loving every minute of it. Right, Ashlyn? Right, Cheryl? Anyways, we'll check back soon. Gotta get back to finishing this. Then we made our way back down to North Carolina, and then we went back through and stayed at Georgia at a campsite, and then came back, and it was an awesome time. So guys, here's my top 10 tips for you first time RVers who want to experience a rental share and don't be afraid of it I'll take you through it and you guys can have lots of fun this is one of the outdoorsy.com RV rental places online that you can go to to find your RV rental they all work basically the same so I'm just going to quickly go over this one because this is the one that we used and I'm going to leave a link down below in the description make sure you click that link because it will give you $50 towards your first RV rental trip or your second, whatever number you're up to now. Use the link below, you'll get $50 discount. And guys, let's take a look at this. Where will your adventure start? For me, I'm just doing Tampa, Florida, USA, and then you can do your dates. Let's just say we're gonna go out on the 8th and we'll return on the 13th. Make sure if you do, like I suggest in the tips uh, following this, that you book maybe the night before so you can have your RV there in your driveway and load it up like a small home. Don't bring in your suitcases, load up the cabinets and drawers and stuff like that the night before so you can be off early in the morning. Here we hit search and then there we go. This is gonna search for all the RV rentals around your area that you can rent. It tells you how much per night. Here's one, a Class A. Uh, you don't need a special license for a Class C or a Class A motor home. And this is $199 per night. When you're thinking of taking your whole family on a camping experience, you get all the luxuries of air conditioning, hot water, all that built in, like your mini mobile uh, hotel room on wheels. So if you compare that to a motel room, hotel room, it's going to be uh, comparable comparatively uh, similar in pricing. The, I found out the campsites are only about, they range from 35 to $65 per night. So that's how you do your calculations on how much you wanna spend. But look at these, you can, if you have a hitch you can, and a plug for the brake lights and stuff like that, you could even rent a trailer. Uh, I like the motorhomes best. Look at this one, this one's pretty cool, the 30 foot. 
Now, I don't think I'm going to drive anything over 34 foot. The one we rented was a 29 foot, but it was a Class C. I'm going to try a Class A next, where you're sitting up there with the front view like a bus. I think that's going to be easier to drive, even though it looks a little bit more intimidating. Uh, after you get that first experience with a Class C, you're going to want to bump that up and go to a Class A, I feel. But it's up to you. Like, here's a uh, Class C. It usually have like has like a van front end on it like a econoline e450 front end so it feels like you're driving a regular type of vehicle on the road but you've got this huge camper on the back so whatever makes you feel comfortable on your first time this was actually the one that i rented right here this is the jayco greyhawk 29 foot and this was 150 dollars per night and we had a total of eight nights but like i said i had it the night before to stock up and get prepared so that's how it works when you go to check out guys this will show you on the map where they're located near your house when you go to check out and you book that experience then you're ready to go ahead and plan your route out you may want to do one before the other it's up to you but just make sure you have the RV vehicle rental booked or at least reserved uh, so it will be available for your trip and when you go to book out, uh, you're, it's going to ask for your verification for credit card. Make sure to have that on hand. And then it's automatically going to book your insurance for the week. So you don't have to worry about all that. It's all taken care of through this RV rent share company. It's very easy. We had a great time. No issues at all. So you want to log in to your internet site and go to koa.com. That stands for, with a K, Campgrounds of America, or, and I would say go to GoodSam.com. And I'll show you an example of these. These are where you can kind of search your states that you're going through, and just it'll pull up all these uh, websites that are in cooperation to give you kind of like consistent standards uh, for your stay at each campground site. So guys, this is the way to go, and let's just take a quick look at it. And see what you could plan out this is where you want to go one of these two koa or uh, goodsam.com this is where you're going to want to go i'll leave the links in the description below it'll probably give you a discount as well if you click on those links but what we're talking about if you go to one of these uh, websites right here it's going to have find a campground and what city or state do you want to go to let's just say we want to go to uh i don't know north carolina redo that and then we want to check in the 8th through say the 13th we'll say to the 11th find a koa click that button there all of a sudden all around north carolina you have all these choices of campsites right here you can click on them to see more information which i like let's just go to let's see you can pick out actually say you want an rv site so you're going to need electric and water so that'll update that so you automatically get that when you're searching say you want wi-fi there too as well and it'll update the search let's just look at this uh cherokee great smokies koa click on that link it's going to take you to the campground site now and this is like a nice little video view of around that site says yes they're open i like this because it gives you the map of the site too so click on the map this is a really cool feature i wish i would have done it this way planners out beforehand and look at how huge this campground is that's why i like this feature it's got the little maps on there it uh, shows you the individual lots you can try to uh, get the preferred lot that you want when you're booking right now it tells you if it's standard site rv premium back end sites are green so all these are premium sites the green they're see why they're premium they're up up against the water there so that's a really neat feature maybe you want to plan a site next to the camp or the playground or something like that for your kids or next to the doggy park if you're bringing your doggies so guys i highly recommend this sam uh, the good sam one also has this as well it says where do you want to go you can pick a state let's just say we're going to go to kentucky and we're going to find a campground that's all you have to do 
all of a sudden you got all these options for you guys. And I like the Good Sam one because it says the appeal rating here. 8.5 appeal rating on this Northern Kentucky one. So that's pretty appealing. The facilities rank a 9.5 if you care about the facilities. If you're in an RV camper like we had, we didn't really have to use the facilities at all. As far as the uh, restrooms uh, are concerned, all of them mostly I noticed that come up on these sites are close to a 10, which is the max cleanliness. Uh, but look at this one. This one is appeal nine. Click on that one. Once you click that link there, you can go view their website, find out more information. But like again here, I like to see the park map. So here's the park map. And then all of a sudden, boom, you've got a nice map to see if this is going to be an entertaining place to stay for you. So guys, check out these two websites when you're planning your RV trip. I highly recommend them. RV tip rental number three. Guys, first, you're going to want to know, how's my driving with this RV? Do you need experience? How do you hook it up once you get there? Is that going to be complicated? Is that going to be something that discourages you from having a great time while you're out exploring the, the United States and the country? Well, no, it, it's very easy. I, like I said, I watched a couple YouTube videos on driving and saw some people driving it. And yeah, it's a big rig. We had a 30 or a 29 foot uh, RV camper. And yeah, you've got some adjustments while you're steering going down the road at the highway speeds. But as long as you watch your mirrors, watch those mirrors, it's got cameras built in. So you have the camera view on the dash as well. And while you're driving, just keep it in the lane and you'll be fine. Uh, it might feel like it's moving back and forth, but actually my wife actually took me to return the camper RV after a week of driving. And she said, I was driving it straight as an arrow, even though I was in there feeling like I was going back and forth and the wind would hit me and stuff like that. But a lot of that is taken care of by your shocks and dampers on the RV. And so you'll have a smooth driving experience. But when you get there, don't be afraid. When you pull them back into your lot, it's easier than you think with the cameras and the mirrors. And back into your lot, get out and do step by step. I'll show you the procedure I followed as I hooked up my RV for the first time. All right, guys, we got to our campsite here with the rental share we got here. Now, you don't want to slide out your slide outs until, if you get a camper with slide outs, until you plug it in is the best thing to do. And our quarter's in one of these compartments here. It's a uh, 30 amp. We've got a 50 amp adapter as well, if we need that at another park, possibly. And then we just plug in to your power board right there. Now I flip the brake, all the breakers off first, and then I'd plug it in and then I flip the breaker back on. And then you got power. And then you can hook up your water. You want this uh, RV water supply hose. Usually they're white in color. And the water hose plugs in right here to the side of your RV. Water inlet right there. That's gonna supply all the water to your RV so you're not walk, working out of water tanks after that. And then at your campsite, you'll have a water supply valve right there. And just screw it in and turn on your water supply. Next thing you got is your, uh, your sewer hose. Sewer hose is usually in one of these other compartments down here. In our case, I think it's in this one right here. And pull the sewer hose out. That just simply attaches by removing this cap right here just to turn, a quarter turn twist. The cap comes off and this hooks on with a quarter turn twist. This is your black holding tank. This is your uh, poop and piss. This is your gray holding water tank. And that's for your disposed water, you know, from showers or washing your hands and stuff like that. Uh, so you wanna dump your black first by pulling that T-handle out, dump that out, push it back in. And then you'll dump, this is at the end of your stay, you'll dump the gray tank. That'll have like soapy water and that will rinse out your drain tube. Just make sure to lift up the tube down into your sewer connection right here. Make sure it's all drained out, hold it up high, and then you can store it back in. Now also, when you connect your water hose, up there you're going to have your control valve selector. Usually it's in a back compartment like this. 
and you can see your settings and what I have it set on now since we're all hooked up. So guys, this has been fairly easy and I can do it now in probably five or six minutes, the whole setup, and then take it down five or six minutes. RV share rental tip number four. Guys, when you're packing, you know what we did, don't make our, the same mistake we did. We packed suitcases and tubs and stuff like that, even though, and I suggest this, we got the RV and backed it into our, drive, uh, our driveway the day before, the night before, so that we could load up all our stuff and be out on the road first thing in the morning. And we did pack up tubs and uh, of all of our kitchen wares, foods and stuff like that, and suitcases and stuff. You don't wanna live like that. You're not gonna get the RV experience if you're living out of suitcases. So I recommend have the uh, RV there the night before, just take and pile up your clothes, maybe take them out in the tub or bin, go out there, open up the dresser drawers, the uh, utensil drawers, stock all that stuff the night before. That way you're living in like a little mini home. That's how you wanna live in a RV campers, live like you're living in a little mini home, not like you're living out of a hotel and opening up your suitcase every day. Or if you wanna have a snack in the evening, you gotta open up all the tubs and look through your tubs of what you brought. Stock all the shelves and the cabinets and the drawers just as if you're moving in for a few days and that's how you're gonna get the best RV experience. Now we're on the RV tip number five, guys. Number five is what to bring. Number one for me uh, in this category, what to bring is I'd like to be comfortable and sleep comfortable. And I sleep knowing that I'm sleeping on my own pillows and sheets and using my own towels when I dry off from a shower or something like that. It just makes me feel confident that I've run those things through the wash and I know it's the pillow I feel comfortable sleeping on. So I recommend bring your own sheets, pillows, towels, stuff like that, so that you'll have an experience comparable of how you're used to living in your own home. So guys, bring your own stuff. Another thing I found out is, and we did plan this, bring some skewers, order them on Amazon. I'll leave the link below for skewers and stuff like that. They're telescopic. Uh, skewers and they got little two prongs on there and you can stick on uh, marshmallows make sure to bring a bag of marshmallows make your s'mores make your roasted hot dogs out there on a campfire that's how you enjoy camping something that you don't normally do around the house you're going to want these types of items to bring with you and that's how you're going to want to pack and what you're going to want to bring rv share tip number six guys number six I almost forgot this. Bring a small tool kit or tool box of some sort with some basic tools. I just brought some basic tools. I almost forgot to bring the toolbox, but I grabbed it at the last minute. And that's what you're gonna need. Just in case something goes wrong, you don't wanna be stuck with just your bare hands as your tools. So make sure you've got like a knife in there, a crescent wrench, maybe a vice, uh, what do you call it? Uh, vice grips. Uh, your basic screwdrivers, your flat and your Phillips screwdriver, stuff like that, basic wrench. And I packed all that stuff and I needed it. Actually, the first after the first night uh, of staying somewhere, I hooked up my water hose too tight by hand. And by the next morning, I could not get a grip to untighten that thing. So I had my vice grips in my toolbox. I grabbed them and within a minute, we were back on the road, unhooked. Uh, there was another time we had uh, one of our lifts our Bigfoot leveling lifts would not retract the next morning. And I had to get in there and reboot the main panel, which took a Phillips screwdriver to un, uh, do the panel. And I unplugged it and plugged it back in. And then all of a sudden the leveler came up. I was in communication with the owner and that helps too. First time you have a problem, call the owner first before you start tearing his or her RV apart. And uh, they may have had that same experience and lead you right to the quick fix so you're back on the road okay rv share quick tip number seven guys number seven quick tip that i'm giving you today number seven is don't forget about indoor entertainment you know you're renting this uh portable small home on wheels make sure you have something to do inside now one day we had a rainy day and that's when we could appreciate it as well as uh, during the evening, sometimes we got, there was too many bugs out there and we got, you know, we were smacking 
uh, mosquitoes off us. We get fed up with it. We want to go inside for a nice cool rest in our air conditioning RV. And we had pre-purchased a couple board games. We had a Yahtzee and we had some other board game. And that's always good. Just old fashioned board games to share with your family and friends while you're on your camping traveling experience as well as we did a, have an electronic device and I highly recommend that if you want to sit down and rent a movie or something get an Amazon Fire Stick. We got the Amazon Fire Station actually uh, the Fire TV that was a little mini block it's kind of old a couple years old I'll leave the links to all these down below but get that it'll hook right into your HDMI port on the TVs usually a camper RV usually has at least one TV in there uh, possibly two uh, back in the bedrooms so that was good we all sat down and we rented a movie one evening and we actually fell asleep to it we're having such a relaxed time on the camping trip with the air conditioning running and just watching a movie rv share tip number what are we up to eight rv share tip eight guys don't forget about transportation now, I was planning when I got up to Maryland uh, and we had those restaurants that I used to go to, tasty uh, Mexican and Italian pizza restaurant, Lido's Pizza and Toucan Taco. Guys, I can't do without. I can't go through that state without stopping at one or the other or both. I recommend if you go through Maryland or Virginia area, go to Toucan Taco in Maryland, Laurel, Maryland, or go to Lido's Pizza, which is a chain all around the Washington DC area. You're going to have a delicious time if you stop at one of those places to get a pizza or a burrito or something like that. So guys, make sure that you have transportation to get there because I was planning on getting there one morning and disconnecting from the campsite and then riding that trailer, camper, RV, all the way up through to the next town, to the restaurant, and then coming back. I was like, man, why would I want to do that to myself, unhook everything? Well, for the tasty food. but. I discovered, well, there's Ubers around there, Uber and Lyft. Get those Uber and Lyft apps loaded onto your mobile phone so that you have them before your trip. Some of the cities, little small town cities and campsites might not have access to the Uber or the Lyft, but they might have one or the other. So go ahead, download those apps because that's what I actually took was an Uber up and an Uber back. And while my family stayed at the camper and at the campsite had fun, I brought delicious food back to the RV and campsite without unhooking. So guys, I suggest the transportation apps just in case you need to go out to the store or get something real quick. RV share tip number nine, guys. RV share tip number nine is have some transportation, some small transportation, uh, entertainment transportation I'm talking about, like a Segway, a mini pro Segway we had and also an electric bike. That's for getting around and discovering and exploring your campsites when you get there. These are cool because they are compact. We have a foldable electric bike. I'll leave the links to what we took with us. Foldable electric bike, mini pro Segway with the handlebars on them. And you can just go out and explore the, web, uh, the website. You can go explore the campground the first day you get in there and just continue exploring throughout your stay, however many nights you stay there. And it's cool because I had one morning, I had some, a trash bag to take to the dumpster. I looked on the campsite map, found the dumpster it was a block away in the campground. I just grabbed the bag, got onto my Segway and just went forward. And I just wheeled it down there on the Segway and motorized, dumped the trash and just explored on my way back on the Segway. So guys, if you like walking, that's fine. That's good exercise. But having like a look electric device like that, a Segway or a foldable bike is a cool, another option to explore your campground. We're up to number 10 RV share tips, guys. This is the last one. And this one is kind of important. You want to know uh, what other camping necessities you're going to need on your trip to have the best time. And I've discovered, uh, make sure you have lighters. What I recommend, I had like the light stick lighter. It's a bendable one. You can get under a campfire wood and stuff like that. Get the uh, starter bricks or blocks for your campfires. 
you're definitely going to want to do a campfire if you go out camping in an RV. Don't miss out on that entertainment factor alone. Uh, so make sure you bring your lighters, your starter bricks. Uh, make sure you bring a flashlight or two. If you're hooking up, you get at the campsite late at night, maybe you want to have somebody hold the flashlight while you hook up your power and, and water and sewer and stuff like that. And guys, if you're bringing your doggies like we did, bring, I recommend this highly, bring one of those screwable ground stakes so you can screw it into your campground site and then also the cable attachment with a quick release. And just uh, when you bring your doggies out of the camper, just connect them up to their harness and they can run freely around while you guys sit around the campfire and stuff and talk about haunted stories and share your experiences with your doggies taken care of. So guys, that's it. All my RV sharing tips. Hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if it went on too long, maybe longer than expected. Save this, share it to friends that maybe be going on an RV trip or something for the first time or want to do something unique for the first time, like renting an RV. It's a very unique experience. I highly recommend it to all my friends and family and to all you subscribers and YouTube watchers. You're going to have a load of fun and I highly recommend it. And guys, I really appreciate you tuning in and seeing my tips and tricks for RV share rental. And guys, I will see you on the next video. Making moves, trying to get away from this life I'm living. Same old things every day. Wanna change this feeling.